Hello, everyone. Uh, well, thank you so much for accessing this resource on YouTube. Uh, first off, I actually made this video before, but I got longer than expected. So that's why I just, I'm just making this new video. I'm going to try to wrap it up in uh, five to seven minutes. That one was around 25 minutes. Okay, so let me just, uh, okay, let's just start. So today we're going to talk about uh, the ESA and the REST API access to it. Okay, now ESA is the email security appliance. I'm going to type master. Okay, so it's the email security appliance. It's used to stop spams, viruses, and all sorts of uh, malicious stuff, I would say, on the internet. So basically, it's going to make sure that no bad stuff enters your network through your emails. That's what it does. It's also known as the iron port. Okay. Oops. Okay. Yep. Sorry about that. Now, um, okay. From the ES's perspective, I'll share the configuration that you can do. Okay. You can, you can configure it from the CLI as well as the GUI. So I'm just going to show it to you from the GUI in this case. So when you go to the GUI, you access your ESA and then go to network and then interfaces and then async os api async os api you will see an option that looks like this okay and uh, then you'll see a couple of ports mentioned 6080 and 6443 these ports are by default um i mean these are there by default you can use any of the ports you want but 6080 and 6443 are default uh, default ports, so I'm just going to write it here, uh, 6080 for HTTP access uh, to the API and 6443 for HTTPS, as you'll find, 6 and then 443. So once you configure it, just make sure to submit and commit. Make sure that the user, um, basically the user username that you're using in your code, in this case we're going to use Python, has um, you know, access to your ESA. Well, basically what I mean is that the username that you mentioned in your code should have access uh, to the ESA to make sure that we can run those get, get requests or any of the requests that we do in this case. So this should be it once you're done with the submit and commit after this. Okay, I'm gonna uh, show you how it looks as well. Um, just let me fetch that in a moment. Okay, jumping right into the program. Uh, where do I have that? I'm gonna. I'm not gonna type it bit by bit. There. Uh, let me just copy and paste the program right there. Okay, so uh, this is the program. Literally, that's it. Yes, I know. Uh, we don't have error handling. No functions, no classes, no nothing used like that. That is recommended that you do programming in that way. Although this program is just to make sure that you get started with, you know, with understanding basically how do we get the API access to it. Um, so let's just go through this program real quick. Importing requests. Now, okay. Before, before that, before that, just make sure of this thing. Okay. Now on your PC, what you need to do is you need to go to the command prompt and uh, run the command pip install requests. Okay. That's for this because it's not installed with Python, pre-installed with Python. So just make sure that you have Python as well, which you get from uh, python.org. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Now, uh, as you see, I'm also using pprint. Okay. So pprint will, uh, for this, for pprint, I'm going to use uh, pep install pprint. That's it. Now, these three things, won't be, once these three things are taken care of, just make sure that your ESA is reachable. Okay. Once it's reachable, you can dive directly into the program. I'll I'll put the program code in the description below. 
and uh, yeah, you can just copy paste from there. So import requests. Uh, this is to make sure that we are able to run the API requests to the server, which is ESA in this case. Importing JSON. Uh, JSON is how you. It, it's a lightweight way of storing in the you know data. So dealing with the data using JSON. Although this right here is optional. This is important. Uh, you can't skip that because that's what we're doing in this case. So if you skip that, there's no need watching this video. Now for this, this is also optional. So you can skip these two, but not the first one. Okay. Now jumping to this line now, URL, this is a variable name. You can keep it whatever you want. This is the format. Now 1.1.1.1 is basically the IP address of your ESA. And you're gonna make sure that you type in type it in correctly. Uh, separate the port number with a colon. Now 6080 is the default port number that I was talking about. Uh, did I talk about it? No, I, I yes I did. Yep, it's right here 6080. Uh, and this is something that you would be able to get from the Cisco website. And this is the resource that we're trying to fetch. System time. Okay, device type equals ESA. This is the attribute. So after the question mark, we use that. Um, you, if you were doing it for the SMA, then you'll use the SMA here. But as we're doing it for the ESA, this is how you do it. Okay, payload not required. Not really. Yeah, yeah, not required. Then we're using headers equals, and then the key value pair. This is to make sure that you're able to access uh, ESA and able to fetch that information. Now this. Uh, is a base 64 encoded form of, of your username and password. A lot of uh, people fail right here. They're not able to get it. So let me just tell you how you do it real quick. Now, what you'll have is you'll go to online. Just to make it easier for you, you can go uh, to Google and type base 64 encoding or encode online. And then you'll type in there your username which has access to it, and then your password exactly in this format. So first your username and then colon and then password. So whatever you get from there, you'll get some uh, um, a code from there, some, some um, you know, uppercase and lower, uh, lowercase letters from there. You're gonna type that right here instead of this ADS, the AS, the ASD, and so on. So this is just a made up thing right there. So cookie again, this can be any value. This is manual. Yeah, just to, just make sure you don't keep it empty and uh, it works with this as well. Key value pair again, then close it off. Then you'll have this, uh, this is again a variable name. You can keep it whatever you want. Just make sure that it makes sense to you whenever, you, whatever you, you, whatever you name it. Okay, then this is the request that we just imported. And uh, this is a part of the request module. Then we're gonna use get. So we have other options as well, post, put, um, delete, these should be the main ones. Uh, although with ESA, you don't have all the options available. But anyways, we're gonna use get in this case. URL is again, this uh, URL that we used. This headers uh, right here, it equals payload. We're not using that anyways, not required. So I'm just gonna do that. And verify equals default. This is important. This is very, very important. This is to make sure that you let your uh, program know that you're not verifying any certificates. So if you uh, skip this, um, this step, if you do not mention this, there's a high chance you'll end up um, with an error which mentions like, which is related basically to your certificates. So this is important. Just make sure of this. You keep this in mind. Okay. Now this again is uh, totally, uh, um, you know, optional. Not not the whole thing, so this is not optional. Well, you need this stuff to print the system time and all the other things. So JSON dot loads, we're using it here. Uh, we got another thing as well, JSON dot uh, dumps basically. So, anyways, that's a different topic altogether. So I'm using it to handle the data. Uh, so whatever we get from a response dot. Uh, for, so whatever we have in response, response.content, we have response.status underscore code. Um, so we got a lot of a uh, lot of things available under under this. Um, so once we run this particular statement in this, <clears throat> so after.
Okay, then we're printing it out, uh, JSON underscore string, and uh, that's pretty much it. So once you do this, just make sure you save your program. You can run the program in idle, I-D-L-E, which you'll get when you install Python. When you download Python, you'll have idle store with this. So just go to start, just go to the start menu and click on, um, and just, just type uh, idle. So that would be I-D-L-E, and once you hit enter, you'll see a screen that looks like this. Uh, sorry, you'll see a window pop up like this. So this is your idle. Uh, you type in the code right here, blah, 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 all of this stuff, this important everything. And then you have to save it before running it. So once you save it, and when you run it, okay, so when you run it, this is what you'll get. I'll just show you the output. Oh, okay, right there. Yeah, this is what you get as the output. So I just ran it a few times. Uh, you get the the day, uh, the month, day, the time, the year, time zone, and that's pretty much it. So yeah. Uh, well, it got longer than expected, but yeah, this is what you get from it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put every single uh, detail or links in the description below. So that you can you can basically use those and uh, you know fetch the information from there in case you want any um, any further assistance on this like you have any questions or anything which I'm able to answer I'll be very happy to help thank you so much right that's it for today thank you so much for tuning in goodbye.